I used to work in an office with a team of people doing data entry years ago. I was surrounded by weirdos in the office, and I pretty much hated them all. I hated the job, and I was looking for a way out, but couldn't seeing as rent cost money and all. Most of the people I worked with were mean and had no business using a computer daily. I liked our boss, which was a gentle guy who just wanted the best for everyone. That's why I didn't immediately quit. This happened after I'd been there for a few months, and I was starting to get to know everyone. There was a younger guy named Tom that had googly eyes for me, and he made that clear. He was a bit of a weirdo, even at first impressions. Tom noticed me in the office and tried to get me to go out to dinner with him almost right away. I told him I had someone else I was seeing, but he must not have heard that. I know what dinner means, and I didn't want to lead him on. I know there was a chance that he could have been just inviting me out to be friends, but very unlikely. When I let him down easy like that, he just kept trying. Over a few weeks, I kept declining to go out with him. I didn't have time to make friends with him anyways, since when I got off work, I'd just want to go home to my own man. Tom wouldn't stop no matter how many times I told him no. I even got annoyed with it and told him that it wasn't going to happen, but he continued non-stop. This far in, he was starting to make comments about taking me by force, but in the moment I didn't think too far into them. It was only after I thought of a comeback did I realize that he wasn't kidding. There was a full day that Tom was being weird around me and acted like he was keeping secrets about me. He would whisper into someone's ear and suspiciously look in my direction. Nothing ever came out of that since he was probably telling them nothing about me in the first place, but doing other things to make me think it was about me. That afternoon, I walked out to the parking lot out back, and Tom sprung out from behind my car in an attempt to jump scare me. I was slightly startled. He got up real close to me to make some bold, weird, and scary comments. He was basically calling himself the alpha that I needed in my life, but wrapped it up by telling me that I will be on him soon. He also got up close and grabbed me by the shoulders to try to hold me in place. So I just pushed him away and got in the car without saying anything else. I didn't think about it because it scared me to think that he might try something, so I just didn't. I did think about going to the HR department, but I thought it might not have been a serious enough thing to bother them. The woman wasn't very approachable anyway. Tom continued to basically stalk me around the office and watch me all the time. When I screwed something up because I couldn't focus because he was siphoning attention from me, he'd rush over to take over the task that I was doing. I knew he was following me because he would just come out of nowhere. I was told later on that he had been seen doing the whole watch me from around the corner thing. I was approached by the boss who asked me if I was doing okay. When I told him yes, that was the first time I'd ever seen him be aggressive when he told me I was lying. I broke down and told him that someone had been following me and putting me in a bad state. He told me not to worry about it, but to next time let him know when something happens. I believe the boss told Tom to lay off the stalking because he actually did for a bit. About a week later, Tom started again, but tried to be more subtle about it now. He would duck around the corners and think I didn't see him. After work one day, I got in my car, but I was the only one in the parking lot. I didn't see Tom anywhere, but his car was still there. For all I know, he could have been hiding in the front seat and waiting for me to drive off. On the way home, I stopped at a gas station and noticed that the car that was following me had completely stopped in the middle of the highway like a moron. I didn't directly look at the car or try to recognize it, but if I would have, I probably would have seen Tom in it. When I got all the way home is when I noticed the car had followed me. I wasn't paying too much attention because the traffic on the road was a little heavy and, you know, cars follow you for miles. Welcome to the world. 
I got out of my car in the driveway and I saw Tom creeping by the house. I was a bit angry, but more scared than anything because Tom now knew where I lived. I called my boss who was thankfully still at the office and told him that Tom had followed me home. He wanted me to tell him that I was sure it was him and I was 100% sure. I saw him as clear as day. I also told my boyfriend about it to make sure that he was on alert. The next morning when I came into the office, Tom was looking pretty angry about something. He must have been told off, but then as the morning progressed, I watched his stuff disappear little by little. Our boss had fired him. I didn't want the guy to get fired, but if that had to be done, then oh well. Don't follow me home, you creep. I didn't want anything bad to happen to anybody because I know how people need money, but obviously he really wasn't worried much about that. I didn't have any more incidents with Tom, but I've had run-ins with other co-workers just being awful but none of them felt the need to chase me home or follow me around the office. They were just little squabbles. I ended up leaving that job for a better one, but with better jobs comes other types of trouble. I may type about them later, but for now, watch out for stalkers. I'm a guy, and when I was in my early 20s, there was a huge community of guys around my same age in the area who liked to play games. The place I live in now doesn't have that, and it saddens me. But online exists now anyways. Back then, I could always find someone to play games with. But the problem was that most of them would disappear after a while. I met a guy at a local tournament for Magic the Gathering that seemed like he knew his stuff. I thought he was cool when we faced off in tournament, and started talking to him afterwards about video games. I was a very competitive person in fighting games and FPS games, so I asked him if he would want to get together and play sometime. That was the mistake that taught me a valuable lesson. This guy was obviously a neckbeard, but what I was once told about the chicken tendies, milady, and fedora wasn't true. Turns out, those are just common traits of a neckbeard, not the end all. I went to his house the next weekend after finishing some things up I had to do at school. As it stood, the guy's house may have been a small apartment, but it was immaculate. He said he had a decent job and it really did show. I never did ask what it was. Him and I sat there on his couch and played Call of Duty, Smash, Mortal Kombat, and anything else you could name. This guy was extremely good at what he did in all those games. He definitely spent a lot of years perfecting himself in-game. I went over to his house plenty of times, but then it all went south. We do kind of live in a poverty-stricken area where most people under 40 have a really hard time keeping anything especially jobs and such. I never really had a problem because I worked with my family and never lost mine. He told me one day that he'd lost his job and he was depressed, but I told him I'd help him look. I had no problem helping a friend out like that. I took pictures of help wanted signs at some really good places, but he never went to go check on any of those. Now, if you'd lost your job and you had to pay rent on an apartment, you'd probably have the ambition to go seek out those other jobs, right? Well, this guy didn't. I still never asked him about his previous job, but someone who knew him told me that he worked for his dad as a secretary in bookkeeping, and his dad let him go because he retired. His dad was also paying the rent on the place, and he was not. Whatever his situation was, it really wasn't my fight. I was there to help him, but of course, give an inch. So Neckbeard tried to get me to get him a job where I work. I can't, my family who owns it won't hire outside the family. He says it's too dangerous. He got kind of salty towards me that I wouldn't even ask, but I wasn't going to stir up trouble at my own job to appease him. The guy got an eviction notice about two months after not paying rent. He started complaining loudly about not having a place to go. 
His dad put him in this apartment to get him out of the house and was now not paying his rent. He dumped it all on him when he retired, but in all fairness, he probably gave fair warning. I'm not saying he did, but his dad seemed like a chill old man who would do that. A week before the eviction, and my friend on the other side of the county was in need of a roommate. I asked him about having this guy give it a try, but he needed a job first. He said he'd get him a job. He was desperate for a roommate to help dampen the bills. I ran back and forth between them trying to set this up, and didn't realize in the middle of it that I was getting caught up in doing other people's work. Neckbeard agreed to the whole thing, and I helped him pack everything up and move in with his new roommate. My friend helped him get his job, but there was a huge problem. Neckbeard didn't do anything to get off the couch to do anything. My friend did everything in his power to try to get this guy a job and help out, but he made up every excuse in the book until he ran out. He finally got a job, but it was some sorry excuse for a business someone put together. His words, not mine. He spent about two days at that job, and then just stopped going. After that, he wouldn't even so much as take a shower anymore. He'd sit there on the couch day after day, and only move to go to the bathroom, eat or sleep. With only so much of this my friend was able to take of his, he started telling him to contribute or get out. At this point, I didn't even hang out with Neckbeard anymore. He slept when I was off, and was only up for a few hours a day. My roommate finally kicked him out of the house, and that's when the real problem started. My friend also had a very bad opinion of the situation that I put him in. I do feel bad, but I had two people in need. I would have felt worse if I had left them hanging. I don't normally get into situations such as this, but again, give an inch. Neckbeard again was facing the street, so I told him I had no other places he could go, and he was going to have to figure that out on his own this time. I had run out of resources and I couldn't help him anymore. He got angry that I wouldn't help him out anymore, but honestly, I wasn't friends with him anyways, so why should I have even tried to begin with? He had something good, but all he did was waste it. So here was this neckbeard, down to his last dollar, and wouldn't even take the last suggestion I had for him. I suggested that he go back to his parents' house, and he said he wasn't going to do that. His pride was too much at stake over having a house to live in. I was done trying to make suggestions to someone who just wouldn't listen. I stopped responding to him at all, and stopped caring. I watched as he threw everything he had away to end up like this and blame it on everyone else. Unfortunately, he knew where I lived. He came up to my house one day and slashed my tires on my already crappy car. I knew it was him because one of the neighbors had seen him do it and described him perfectly. I made a police report about this, but they didn't have any proof other than say so. What more proof do you really need if a neighbor of mine described him perfectly and didn't even know him at all? I'm not exactly friends with a neighbor. We've had our issues. But after the unwarranted help, we're cool. I ghosted him as much as I could since that was probably the best course of action. After a few more texts of him saying that he didn't do that and he wanted to hang out again, I told him I was blocking his number and not responding to anything else. I didn't want contact with him anymore since he was just a user. He wanted everything done for him and handed to him. He stopped trying to contact me then. A few years later, he looked me back up. Somewhere down the line, I got a text from a number that I didn't recognize. I'd mostly forgotten about him and had moved on with my life for the most part but it all came flooding back when I read his name on my phone. He wanted to hang out and play some games. I told him that he should have read the last text message that I sent to him about not contacting me again. He tried to blow that off as if we were still friends, or had even ever been. I stopped responding to him, but he took that as an invitation to come over. 
He showed up at my doorstep wanting to hang out, and I told him that we weren't doing that because we weren't friends. I got salt from him, but he ended up leaving. He came back and or called me a few times after this, but he finally got the message when I had to yell his ear off through the phone. I wondered how someone could have it spelled out to them several times and still not get the message. I never want to be friends with someone like that ever again, but I'm glad he's out of my life. That could have ended badly for me if I continued to be the helpful type like I've known to be in the past. Back then, I didn't know when something was going to be a lost cause or not, but now I can see it coming from miles off. Hopefully he can find a good stable job and stay off everyone's couch. His biggest problem was that he was handed jobs and wouldn't even make an effort to fill out an app. If he had just done that while living with my friend, we could have still been hanging out and playing games. He might have even still been living there. But some people just aren't worth saving. I was traveling to my parents' house for the holidays, and they lived in a remote little place. I hated the place they lived, and wanted them to move into the city, but of course they refused. So I was almost through with my trip, and night had fallen on me. In this weird little scene that I was in, I was already on edge. I was in the middle of the woods with no sign of city anywhere. There was nobody on the road with me, and nothing on either side of me. I was getting really tired because I had been driving all day, but I thought about continuing the drive until I at least found a little bit of civilization. The road wouldn't end, and I was starting to doze off. I found a little motel on the side of the road and stopped at it. I was still on edge, and seeing as this was my only option for a real bed, it didn't help. I stopped, sat in the car sort of dozing off for a few minutes, and then got out and went up to the front desk. I paid for a room which was suspiciously super cheap, and probably for a good reason. I went into my room to lay down and crash, but of course as soon as I laid down, someone knocked at my door. I walked over to the door to see who it was, and couldn't see anyone through the peephole. I looked out the window and also saw nothing. I just laid back down thinking it might have been someone in the next room over. They seemed to have stopped when I got up, but of course, when I laid back down, I heard a knock again. I ignored it because I thought it might have actually been the next door room. It was not. That was somebody knocking on my door, and they weren't stopping. I got back up to see who it was, and as soon as I did, they just stopped again. I started to get annoyed at this. I opened the door and looked around the outside, but saw nobody. I went and laid back down and waited for it to start again. It did start again, but I didn't get up this time and just ignored it. The knocking kept going on for like five minutes. After that, it finally stopped, and I was able to relax and try to get to sleep. I had no energy left. When I'd finally gotten most of the way asleep, I jolted awake after I thought I heard someone messing with the door handle. This hotel was the cheap kind and had lock and key instead of the key card thing normally seen. I swear I heard the top lock unlock slowly. I got up to confirm that the door was still locked, while still being mostly asleep. It woke me up the rest of the way to find the door had actually been unlocked. I started internally freaking out, with several scenarios going through my head. The only comforting one was that I'd forgotten the locket when I came in. Either that, or I was asleep and dreaming this whole thing. I locked it, and went back to laying down. I wasn't even asleep yet, before I heard the top lock click again, and I sprang up to run over to the door. I saw that it was unlocked, and I felt my heart start pounding. I locked it back, 
and started looking out everything I could to see who was doing this. I couldn't see anyone. I'd already convinced myself that I needed to leave and go somewhere else, anywhere else but here. Perhaps I would sleep in my car on the side of the road. Maybe I'd fall asleep before I even got that far and take a nap in a ditch. Anything was better than this. I was trying to sleep and someone was trying to get in, or at least mess with my head and that wasn't cool. I grabbed the few things that I came in with and went outside to sling them in the car and then go up to the front desk. When I got up there, the guy who took my money wasn't there. I walked around the area yelling, Hello? Nobody was around. I'd be doubling back here on my way home, but I was leaving. I didn't know what to do with the keys, so I just dropped them in the front counter and left. I noticed on my way back to the car that someone had been ducking behind corners and trying to hide. I didn't care who or why. I was getting out of there as soon as I could. I was able to hop in my car and not get mugged. I left in a hurry and I was safe. Nobody followed me down the road and that's what mattered. I ended up sleeping in my car in a little cove that I found on the edge of the woods. I woke up drenched in sweat because I wasn't about to leave my car on for 8 hours and probably wake up to a dead ride in the middle of nowhere and my cell phone didn't have any reception out there. So I woke up the next day and drove an extremely long time through the woods road. I'm glad I stopped where I was because I wouldn't have made it to any sort of town for a long time. I would have taken a plane, but I wasn't exactly in the position to pay for a ticket, and neither were my parents. My stay at my parents' house was pretty good, but when it came time to go back home, I stopped back at the hotel. I found the guy at the front desk and told him the story of what happened that previous night. He of course denied the whole thing. He said it was impossible and I was lying. I asked him for my money back and told him I'd get the police involved, or maybe worse. I ended up getting my money back, but he cussed me out for it. When I got back in my car, I had a girl approach me and knock on my window. She told me that she was leaving and I should too. I told her I was, but I asked also why she was leaving. She said that they had cameras in the rooms and they were spying on people. And of course I was shocked to hear this, but while I do believe it, I had to tell myself that it probably wasn't true and started heading home. That was really only to make myself feel better about it, and maybe they didn't watch me or have me on some recording somewhere. I know this was years ago, but it still scares me to think about it, and it puts a deep pit in my stomach that they might have had some recording of me trying to sleep and somebody on the other side of the door messing with my head. Whatever they were trying to do, I don't know, but there was somebody trying to get into that room that night, but I'm glad nothing came of it. When I lived by myself in a small neighborhood, I found myself at odds with a woman who lived a few houses down from me. She was crazy, and the rest of the neighborhood agreed. I didn't have a whole lot of time nor the money to put into my lawn in those days, because I was nearly always gone, but I owned the home, and there was barely any grass. Most of the yard was dirt and mud due to the previous owner, my uncle. I lived with him when he was alone, and he left the house to me. Before I got it, he absolutely destroyed the yard with his machinery. That being said, the neighbor in question had a huge problem with it. She moved in a few months after I became the owner of the house. Our neighborhood didn't have one of those regulated rule sets or anything. It was every homeowner for themselves, and that was it. I couldn't live in a place like that anyway. So the woman I came to know as Spacey came to my front door to make a half-hearted argument about how she didn't like my yard because she had to look at it. 
she was going to make me take care of the yard so that she lived in a better looking place. I told her if she felt so strongly about it, she could fix my yard. She went off on a thing that I couldn't quite follow. I am just a speck in the universe. Blah, blah. That's all I remember. So I call her Spacey now. At first it was Space Lady, but this fit better. She just spat some really spaced out shit. Her nickname, I think, is better than calling her Karen like everyone else does. So she kept going on and on about it, and I just shut the door and went on about my evening. It was honestly kind of hilarious when I shut the door. She screamed and left. She showed up at my house several times after that to demand that I do something with my yard. Each time, I thought up things to piss her off for even coming up to my door. Nothing bad, just annoying things to see how she'd react. The last time, she showed up with her phone in her hand to tell me that she was going to call the police if I didn't fix the yard. I told her, go right ahead and call them. I stood there in the doorway with my arms folded and waited for her to do it. <laughs> she actually did it. They told her that it wasn't a crime to have a muddy yard and that there was nothing they could do about it. Imagine that. Spacey's face turned red with what I assume was either embarrassment or pure anger because she wasn't getting her way. After that day, I didn't see her for a while. I thought she had gotten tired of coming over here and getting shut down each time. So while I was at work, someone threw a rock through my front window. I know it was her, but I just couldn't prove it since nobody saw her so I didn't blame her for it. I couldn't get the window replaced because I didn't have the money yet, hence why the yard was still muddy. What I did have the money for though was a security cam. I set it up inside to catch the front yard and door and put a trash bag over and boarded up the other window. Just like an idiot, she came back and I caught her on camera vandalizing other things in my yard. I called the police to report the evidence. I just told them to have her pay for what I could prove what she vandalized. Weeks later, I was asked to do some work on another neighbor's house, which I was glad to do. They needed help with a porch project that they were working on, and I went over there in the late afternoon when I got off of work. We weren't making much noise, but it was enough to attract Spacey. She waited for the neighbor to leave to come up there and start trouble. He'd gone to the store to get something that we needed. I was on the porch still working, and she accused me of trying to break into the house. Now clearly I had a tool in my hand. Anyone else would assume what I'm doing not to be breaking into a house across the street from my own in broad daylight with the guy's wife still home. Spacey started yelling at me that she was going to call the police on me again and then started throwing clumps of dirt at me. I ran inside to get away from her, which the neighbor's wife even opened up the door for me. She saw the whole thing and told me to call the police on her. Her husband got back in that time, but I did call the police at least to report it. When they came out, she had already left and gone back home. To my surprise, we had several eyewitnesses from the surrounding houses, and some of them came over when they saw the police. There's a lot of older nosy people that live in the neighborhood, and I do appreciate most of them for being that way. So the police made contact with Spacey and asked me if I would like to press charges on the assault, but I didn't think it was quite worth it. I just wanted to scare her a little bit so maybe she wouldn't mess with me again. Maybe she couldn't get it through her thick skull, but she decided to take it further. In the afternoon times after that when I got home, she'd follow me to my house and just walk up and down the street in front. I was thinking about calling the police yet again on this lady, but what good would that do? She'd just find some other crazy way to terrorize me. Sometimes when she was walking up and down the street, she'd see me in my house and just stand there and stare in my windows from the street. I know what she was doing. She was being crazy and trying to intimidate me. 
I don't know what she thought I was going to do to appease her, but I had to call the police on her one last time anyway. She decided to start stealing my mail. I caught her on the security cams that I had still set up. She apparently didn't know about them or at least forgot. She was arrested for mail tampering since she actually opened my mail, not just stole it. After that, she just kind of stopped bothering me. I don't know what happened to her, but the crazy space lady got the message. I heard at some point that she moved away out of state. I'm glad she's out of my business. It only lasted for a little while, but it was definitely long enough. My yard is still a muddy mess though, and I don't plan to make anyone happy by fixing it on their behalf. Back in late 2017, I broke up with my girlfriend who was cheating on me. She'd spent the last three months at her new boyfriend's house, and told me that she was staying at her aunt's house to get doctor's visits in that area. She only talked to me when I called to see how she was doing, and I knew something was up. I got a call from her aunt one night asking if I knew where she was at. Apparently, she had strung a web of lies that made it back around to bite her where it counted. Her aunt told me that she wasn't staying there with her. She didn't know where she was. I told her the full story that she was supposedly staying with her for doctors that she could only see through insurance, and they happened to be that far away. Her aunt denied the whole thing, and I was pissed. I didn't call her right away to see why she had been lying to me like this. I figured that I'd calm down first and then give it a shot. A few days later, I called my girlfriend to see if she'd continued the lie when I told her her aunt denied her being there. She did. She tried to claim dementia on her aunt. I'd known that woman for decades, and I know she's sharper than I am. I called her out at that moment, and told her to send me a picture of her at her aunt's house. She couldn't do it and got pissed off at me that I was accusing her of lying to me. A few days later, I called her again to tell her that I packed up all her stuff and sent it to her aunt's house and she came clean. I don't know why that did it, but I finally got it out of her. She'd been at some dude's house and they'd gotten into it before she left. I told her I was still sending her stuff to her aunt's place and we were through. After all that, I did send her stuff to her aunt and told her it was coming. I didn't hear from her after that. A year later, my Facebook profile got hacked, and I lost access to it altogether. I emailed Facebook to get them to help, but they never responded. I could see somebody posting on it from another account that I had, since they'd turn off all privacy and was allowing anyone to see it. All my personal stuff was on there. It took so long to get back into my Facebook account with the help of a friend who knew what to do, but by then it was a total mess. I found messages on my messenger that definitely wasn't me, but I know who it was. It was my ex-girlfriend. She had been posing to some people as me and saying a lot of untrue random stuff to make me look bad. I didn't mind that so much since most of the people she was telling all this stuff to didn't believe it was me anyway. The ones that did, I wasn't really close to. What did bother me was that she started stalking me for no other reason but to come to my house and just monitor what I was doing. I suspected being high had a lot to do with it. She wasn't this way when we were together. She got out of her car one day to come up to my house to stare at me through the window. She didn't move. She didn't try smashing anything. She just stood there, stared into the house. I know she saw me. She's not blind. I stood there and stared at her from the inside because why not? I even made a what motion at her, and she just stood there, unblinking. She did this a few times. There would be no warning, and it was always about the same thing. She'd come over about the same time during the late afternoon, and just stare into the window. I even opened up the door to ask if she wanted something one of those times, but she just stared a hole through me at the door. She didn't say anything at all. 
Eventually, I just got tired of her being there, and I told her to get off my property before she got herself into some trouble. She just stood there unblinking. I went back inside and called the police to get her out of there, but by the time I got back to the window, she was gone. It didn't happen again for a good long while, but after she had lost access to my Facebook account, she started bashing me hard on hers. She made a threat on hers, and that got her banned, but she made another one and did the same thing. She had to be on something. Her actions made absolutely no sense. I finally replied to her on Facebook and told her I was sick of her doing this to me, and if she valued what she had left, she would stop. She took that as a threat, and came back to my house to let me know she was angry about it. She even tried to attack me through the door, but failed miserably. I suspected that she had some of her problem on her, since she's never been that smart. So I called the police and told them to come get her off my property. Knowing that she'd probably attack them, I kind of thought this would be the end of it. I was right. They found some stuff on her, and she was gone. I watched the whole thing through my window as she tried to resist arrest and all that. It took that much to get her to stop, but it actually fully hasn't. On occasion, she'll show back up somewhere, like when I'm at work, and she comes in with her disgusting-looking boyfriend. She'll make comments and harass me a little bit. It's nothing I can't handle, but I can't do the staring through my windows at me. That's just way too creepy. I'll write again if something else happens with her, but I doubt it now. If you like this video, consider subscribing. If you are subscribed, hit the bell icon to make sure you never miss an upload. I just have one question for you. Who is that behind, Who is that you? behind you?